Hi, this is Dr. Stefan. In this video, I'd like to discuss about familial pulmonary fibrosis in real life. And the reason why I'm making this uh, clip is because I've received a very good comment on one of my other channels in which I discuss about familial pulmonary fibrosis. I have a video explaining this in more detail. I'll leave a link in the description for that, but uh, you, can, you can find it there if you, if you want to check it out. But I'll read you the comment because I think it's a really, really great comment that outlines how we may think about familial predisposition for getting lung scarring, pulmonary fibrosis, and how we can do things to maybe keep that from progressing really quickly. So maybe this is interesting for you and I'll, I'll give you my take on it afterwards. So bingo, you just described me. 69 years old, CAT scan two years ago showed lung fibrosis, never smoked, no history of exposure to environmental uh, causes. My younger brother discovered same scarring very recently referred to specialist. His diagnosis was probably familial. Referred to genetic counseling testing next month. So far, I am in very good condition. CAT scan shows no additional deterioration from the original one two years ago. I exercise, lift weights to utter exhaustion. The doctors are pleasantly surprised and have described my exercise capacity as enormous considering my age. I believe my dedication to fitness has helped me um, help make my pulmonary function much more efficient than an average sedentary 70 year old. So this is a fantastic comment because I think it highlights how pulmonary fibrosis may be diagnosed within families. So brothers, sisters, parents may, may share a similar condition of pulmonary fibrosis but the trajectories of disease may be different. And this may be related sometimes to our lifestyle. It may be related to how the, the genetic predisposition affects our body. It can be a lottery sometimes of our, how we get our genes passed on from, from generation to generation, but also there's a huge influence of environmental factors. That's being recognized more and more in recent years. So familial pulmonary fibrosis, if you don't know this term, just refers to lung scarring, different types of conditions that lead to lung scarring that shares a familial predisposition. So several first degree relatives may be affected. It's not always familial pulmonary fibrosis. It can be familial conditions that share a common genetic trait. Unfortunately, there's limited awareness of this condition, familial pulmonary fibrosis. So many cases go unrecognized. And I've actually seen this in my practice. Sometimes patients can be seen by the same ILD service, the same interstitial lung disease service in the same city, and no connection is made because different doctors will see different family members. And unless one patient, one of the patients volunteers that, well, my brother's under the same service and you ask them their name, you cannot make the connection because this is one of those, uh, those questions that doctors may not ask about, you know, family history may not be considered. It hasn't been considered as a significant factor before, but it's becoming increasingly recognized. And within the field of interstitial lung diseases, unfortunately, consultations can be quite long. So this can lead to many things being missed, uh, which is unfortunate. And family history is one of those situations which you know, can be missed. We, we may not ask the questions, we may not record the family history. And also patients may think it's not important. Sometimes they don't mention that, uh, uh, you know, my brother suffers from the same thing. So not uh, everyone will share this information because the connection has not been made and there's not a lot of awareness. But there are many, many cases of familial pulmonary fibrosis out there for sure. There are more cases than we are currently detecting. So as long as we ask about family history, we're on the right path, I believe. Knowing that familial predisposition exists to getting lung fibrosis is hugely important because we can identify family members who are at risk, who may not know that they are ill or if they may not know that something may be coming. They may be at risk of getting bad outcomes for their lungs. It can therefore lead to earlier diagnosis if we know that there's a predisposition in the family, better outcomes for relatives, children who eventually get diagnosed with this condition. Not everyone gets diagnosed with familial pulmonary fibrosis, but it's important to consider that there's a higher risk. And it's important to also note that uh, pulmonary fibrosis treatments that we have available, so anti-scarring medication, anti-fibrotic medication, only slows down progression. It does not cure. It doesn't reverse the damage that's already done. So we need early diagnosis. We need to diagnose these patients early in order to be able to start treatment as soon as possible to prevent the damage. So this is 
an important thing. And also just knowing that there's a familial predisposition and that we've drawn the short straw of the genetic lottery sometimes, it gives us some answer. Why me? Why did I get pulmonary fibrosis? And I think that's really important to, for psychological reasons and to cope with the condition better. So what can you do if you do have familial predisposition to getting pulmonary fibrosis? You have a brother, a sister, a parent, um, someone who has pulmonary fibrosis, for example, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, and you're wondering what can you do to prevent you from getting the condition? So I think the comment that we were reading before uh, about this person who had a, a brother diagnosed with the same condition, but they are exercising, they're in good shape, that's probably one clue there. I think that's really, really important. So healthy living is really, really key to improving outcomes and to preventing um, issues from happening. So I have a link in the description for another video that I posted on the other channel about healthy living. You may want to consider it. It's, it's not necessary or you can read. There's plenty of books out there on how to have a healthy lifestyle. And I think that's really important. But basically healthy lifestyle and why I drone on about this is because it's been shown to slow down telomere shortening. And I speak about telomere shortening in some of these videos about familial predisposition because telomeres if you do not know, they are the end bits of the DNA code of the building blocks of life. And they are thought to be basically structures that protect the DNA when the cells divide and multiply, when the DNA needs to be copied, it prevents damage to the actual genetic code, the information. It's been shown that telomeres shorten faster in patients with pulmonary fibrosis. It's a bit like a fuse that sort of burns faster in patients who develop pulmonary fibrosis. There's actually lots of research going on that shows that healthy living promotes telomere uh, protection. So basically the telomeres shorten slower in people who have healthy lives. And if you think about this as a timekeeper for aging, you can actually p consider that slowing down telomere shortening may actually prolong the time that we have on this in this life on this planet and actually it may slow down pulmonary fibrosis progression as well there's no direct data correlating dietary intervention exercise intervention to pulmonary fibrosis but we know that patients with pulmonary fibrosis have shorter telomeres so if we can prevent that as much as possible it seems plausible that it will have an effect the other thing that we can do, especially because we're talking about lung disease, is to not smoke. So if obviously, if you are smoking, consider quitting because that may probably include, uh, increase your risk of developing further damage to the lungs. Also reducing other environmental exposures, so to, uh, such as inhaling lots of dust, fumes, consider indoor pollution. So, you know, having stoves that are not uh, really pulling the smoke out very well and you have smoke in your house, things like that. Those can contribute to damage to the lungs. And as the, the lungs actually try to fix the damage, they have to replace cells and the telomeres may shorten faster if you're basically challenging the lungs all the time. They may be chronically stressed, let's say. Think about also general stress. If you have a lot of stress in your life, if you're not sleeping enough, all of these things can actually contribute to faster telomere uh, shortening, which may accelerate the process of pulmonary fibrosis. Exercise just like the comment was mentioning before, has also been shown to protect telomere length, especially if you're, if you're consistent, if you're always exercising a little bit. It doesn't have to be gym every day, lifting weights like in the comment below, but even just going for a walk every day, at least 30 minutes, brisk walking, you will become stronger, you will feel better overall. So having good exercise and then good diet as well is really important. So just eating whole foods, nuts, vegetables, fruit, these sort of things, incorporating these in your diet while avoiding processed meals, microwave meals, lots of salt, lots of fat, lots of things like that probably will lead to better health overall. And the main thing I would say, if you do have family members who suffer with pulmonary fibrosis, it's important to try to consider seeing your doctor and discussing this situation. You may be referred for some sort of a screening program. Now, unfortunately, there isn't a very clear guideline on how to monitor relatives who, of patients who have pulmonary fibrosis, but you can have a discussion about lung disease and related disorders with your doctor. You can maybe have lung function testing done every year. Potentially, you can have a CT scan of your chest, a high resolution CT scan of your chest to determine whether or there are any changes. And if there are, maybe you follow those up, you know, every five years or so with another scan. It's the clear pathway isn't there yet, but we are working on it. And actually there is a 
paper that I published with some of my colleagues. If you want to check it out, I'll leave a description below. We give you a perspective on how we feel screening for uh, healthy uh, screening of healthy relatives for pulmonary fibrosis may be done. So I hope this information was helpful to you. It's um, it's a lot to talk about and it's hard to capture in one video, but I'll try to make more videos on this channel and my other channel about pulmonary fibrosis and lung disease. So if you have further questions, do leave them in the comment section below. I really enjoy seeing your questions and I try to answer them through videos like this one. Thank you very much for watching and all the best.